name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I'm back in East Hampton Community TV with Kathy and Tim and very grateful for their support and their help. Here again to talk about Joel Goldsmith. As you know, I'm focusing totally on him in this particular chapter in my life because he's changed mine. He was a businessman, he was a Christian science practitioner, he created a movement called The Infinite Way, and the book I want to discuss today is Living the Infinite Way, and it's, I always say I feel I've never read his books when I open one, because they're all saying the same thing, but they say it, they frame it so differently that it's so alive and so fresh. And I am positive Joel was just an amazing genius. There was no question, a powerful influence, a channel for God to work with. He was driven, and his vulnerability, which I had discussed in the very first show on The Man, his persistence, his pain, his struggles, his humanness, and how he really found some happiness, some joy, and how he found the infinite way. So the infinite way, living the infinite way, Joel starts out with an introduction about what the Bible is. It is the book of life, it is alive. Now he suggests that if you think it's a literary work or a historical piece of work, it is not that. The word is alive, it's fresh, it's new, it's the voice, it's the love of God. So he wants us to understand that the Bible needs to be discerned spiritually, invisibly, now that's very interesting. Invisibly, something our eyes, ears, all our senses are not involved with. It's an inner knowing, it's a presence, it's a peace, it's an experience. So because God is life and God is love and is the creator and the divine principle of all that is, he is the cause of the entire universe. He manifested us as the universe. We are God in disguise. We are instruments. He's working with us to become evolved to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, we've got to really understand about how do you live with an invisible presence? How do you let go of a human world, a material plane, that it, we are just inundated with all the laws of health, hygiene, money, what's important, good cars. That's the way we live here. And so we're all innocent and we're all frankly ignorant of divine law unless we study it, we meditate, we go within and we find the truth of that still small voice. So the reason I think God is so patient with us is he knows we don't get a lot of this. He knows narrow is the gate, few understand in Jesus' day what he was saying. Jesus did pass three major temptations, the Garden of Gethsemane, the cross, and the resurrection. He was tempted to say, please take this from me. What he achieved was he let go of his material body altogether. He realized that was not who he was. And that was a major accomplishment where he did rise and he did know he was God within him. He had the Christ mind. He had everything he needed. He knew he would resurrect. So he passed those three tests and he had three, days of te three years of teaching, but it took a long time for him, for his consciousness to grow to the point where he could achieve that final resurrection. So he evolved. He unfolded. Yes, it's good to know that the man Jesus unfolded as we are unfolding, that he worked hard at going within. He tried to trust it. He, he worked at it. He meditated. He prayed. He had to overcome his mind here. Oh, I mean, he had to under understand that the, the crown folks wanted to give him was not who he was. It was not what he was about. He wanted to live and manifest the miracles that he did. He wanted to feed the poor. The loaves and fishes were added to him every time he went within, every time he got it, every time he understood. He was the life, the very life of God. And so he talks about this, this invisible presence. I mean, it's so interesting that fear falls away 
when you understand that you're only, only here to hear that voice. That is it. That is your life. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing out there you can want. You don't want a cross. You don't want the heavens. You don't want the skies. You don't want anything out there because that's not who you are. And it's not going to give you life. Anything on the outer realm, in the human plane, in the material form, is not it. So we can fall for a lot of that. We can be tempted. Jesus was tempted, so it's good to know even he had to struggle to know that the material plane did not exist, that his body was divine, his health was perfect. He would never have lack. And lack is very interesting for all of us to think about. Lack has to do with supply. How do we get supply? God gave each of us a mission here. If your soil is fertile, if you're open, if you've done your studies, if you've done your inner work, if you're devoted to the voice, if you're devoted to any spiritual practice at all that brings you close within to God, then you are on the path. And once you're on the path, God will illumine you, like it or not. And of course, you'll like it. Because on the path, you don't get off. Because the joy, the fullness, the love that you feel within, the miracles that happen around you, well, you can't trade that in for anything else. And speaking of those miracles, to, to know God knows exactly what you need before you even think you need it. I like that. He, he just brings everything to you if you can trust that your inner work is all you need. That voice is all you need. Everything will be added unto you. The loaves and the fishes will be coming to you. Everything, you, the, there will be no lack. There'll be abundance. There'll be perfect health. There'll be holiness. There'll be, everything will be divine. Now, it sounds easy enough, but to get there requires prayer and meditation and knowing God as one law, one cause who's created everything. The one cause is the one law unto health, under wealth, under companionship, under every law, there's only one cause. And that cause is the voice. And I will be saying that many times in this half hour. The voice is the guide. It allows everything to leave you. It gives you, every, it's so simple it gets by us because we are so used to being inundated with fear. We worry about war and poison and everything the earth plane tells us to be afraid of. We go for that because we hear it. So it does pay to be, don't pray amiss for abundance, for anything you think the I, me needs or should have. Anything of that personal ego, anything that this earth plane says, gosh, you gotta have that. Praying for those things, actually, I think Joel tries to tell us that's the sin. That's where God can't help you because you're not looking in the right place. You're not looking for the holiness. You're not looking for the abundance. There will be no lack, but it comes in a very original way for every one of us. I like that original way. The path opens up for us. He knows our needs before we do. And I like that because I think I have needs. And then I think, hmm, the reason I'm in this situation may be there's a better idea going on out there for me. So I hang on to that and faith is not blind. It's a given with just that still small voice. God is the experience. The infinite way is trying to help us with an experience. Not letters, not, we can hear the letters, we can hear the tapes, we can do the reading, we can do the studying. Those two are instruments to get us to that truth in our consciousness within. That we can study to get there. We, we think of something that's divine. And as we rest in that, all of a sudden there's that click that Joel calls, that knowing, that deep, deep, deep feeling of the presence. Once that happens, you're home free. Fear falls away. The earth plane falls away. The Red Sea opens up. Miracles happen. The voice guides. It's a touching, amazing experience. So when you're on the path, you can't get off because you don't want to. And you want more miracles. You want more joy. You want more companionship. You want more perfection. You don't want to get sick. He talks about the body. He says, you know, that body, we, we, on the earth plane, we've got laws about aging. Well, this I kind of like myself. 
what we're supposed to look like, how we're supposed to feel, what can happen next. Whereas in the infinite way, those inner eyes, ears, and thoughts are perfect. Your body is whole and complete and perfect. Now that requires a little bit of working with to eliminate the fear of what, what our health laws are, what we need to fight, what we need to take something for. I mean, that's, that's what's here. That's a law on the material plane. If there's one law and there's one God law, and that is only that still small voice, we're home free. So if we have fears, which we do, of course, we're here. We need to go within, we need to rest in the everlasting arms, and we need to find that presence. Not always easy to find that presence on a very busy day when you've got worries and concerns and things aren't looking good, or someone needs your help and somehow or other they're not a good patient and they really have no patience with you. You're trying to love your neighbor as yourself and you're struggling with that some days. Here's such an important, really, a hook for living the infinite way is loving your neighbor as yourself is key. Now, because we're all in human material form, our flaws are seen, we just don't look perfect and we don't act perfectly. So here's the test. You take a look at all of humanity. You see maybe somebody robbing something or you see someone abusing someone. Look, your gift to spirit is to not try to correct it, eliminate it, change it. It's to see with a vision of holiness. See the spirit, the invisible part of every human being, the invisible spirit. Even if they don't see it, that doesn't matter. It is there. It's just not awake yet. But you can see it for them. As a healer, you can give them that gift. If you're walking down the street and somebody is in trouble, bless them within. Switch what it looks like to the divine soul that they are. That requires dying daily to human thought. It's a big assignment. It's exhausting at times. It needs to be done. And you will do it to the degree that you feel inner peace. That is the evidence of working the infinite way. It's not how many cars, how much money. It's does that person have inner peace? Is he sweet and glowing and peaceful? Does he receive the word of God, not with his senses, not with the five senses, but with the inner voice? That requires peace and quiet. It requires prayer, meditation, and communion. Communion within. Communion is just that. Communion is resting in spirit. Communion is lowering all the voices. Now that's very hard to do some days, and Joel will recommend you don't beat yourself up, is that you try really hard to let them come so that they work themselves through, and then they leave. And then you just keep going deeper and deeper. And you can see, my friends, where I'm going. We go really deep to hear the voice of God. And we marvel at the funny ways that uh, the messages come through. They come when you're not really thinking about them because God knows what you need, so he's always telling you what to do next, right down to taking the chicken livers out of the turkey. It, it's really fun when you find those are little miracles and you chuckle saying, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that, but thank goodness that he did and is reminding me of these things. Today I received all kinds of messages for my children, for myself. I warmed my voice up because sometimes I forget to do that and then I haven't got one. But I was told to do all of those things. And I also am told by God that if I want to be illumined and I am on a path, he will see to it that every word that I need will be sent to me. He will be in charge and responsible for this lifetime, for bringing me close to home, for using me as an instrument to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. We're all here to do that. But we do it privately. Let me talk about that. One of the key keys to the infinite way living is privacy. Joel did not want to advertise this as a faith. He didn't want to get groups going. He didn't want to give it a, a name in this world. He wanted it to be a movement for mystics who live quietly and privately within themselves. So no matter where they are, they're being mystical. 
They're working within. They're dissolving. They're seeing nothing where there looks like trouble. And they do that. The privacy is the key. The privacy. And Jesus did that. He privately brought about the loaves and the fishes. He turned everything around by surrendering and expecting the material plane was not here. He worked hard. Now, if he taught three years, that was not a whole lot of time, but he did what he needed to do. He finished his journey. He told us we have the mind of Christ. He talks about, I am the vine. When, he, oh, when the disciples said, oh, you're the king, he said, no, I'm not giving any of this to you from me. It's all coming to me from my father, the vine. I'm a branch. You're all branches on this vine. And guess what? Because we're all feeding into the vine and the vine is being fed into the soil and the soil is being fed with minerals, with water, with wind, with sun. God has given us everything. We are just connected to each other. So if we're one of the branches, all of our neighbors are branches as well. Whether they're connected to the vine and don't know they are does not matter. Our job is to see them connected, to see the spirit within them. That is our gift to God as instruments to be invisible. So I am the vine and we are the branches and the Godhood, the husband man, is in charge of all. God is the sole creator of everything. There's one law, there's one God, there's one power. There's no law of health and, and medicine and there's no, none of those other powers exist. If you can really work hard to understand that and the way you will understand that is through meditation. And that meditation is the secret. It's the secret to privacy. You can be in the worst situation in the world, but within, you're madly transforming any issue by dissolving it with the five senses. The fear disappears. The voice appears. You've changed and transformed your whole inside out. You become a disciple. And the disciples had limited consciousness. They did not do everything Jesus was able to do, but they could perform many miracles, but they were, again, they had limited consciousness like we all have where we're unfolding. The infinite way is all about that unfolding, which requires patience. And thank you, Joel, for reminding me that I need to be patient about my unfolding, that the source is there. It never leaves us. And that's key. The source is always there. Whether we get it, whether our neighbors get it, we are whole, complete, and perfect inside, within. We have the pearl of great price. We have it every minute of every day. It's waiting for us always. We don't have to beg for it. We have to realize it. A big word in the infinite way, realization. Feel it, realize it, go deep for it. Because as the Red Sea opens up and you find that you get this guidance because you've allowed everything to quiet down to that peaceful place where you can hear the still small voice. It's very gentle. It's uh, loving. God loves us. I mean, even Adam and Eve, when they left the garden, they thought they saw two powers. They saw good and evil. They wanted to concede that, and they did. Uh, the prodigal son left the source. He came home. I mean, we do this. We do this. But we need to come home, and we do come home, because it is the most wonderful experience that there is. So my friends, meditation is key. It's the avenue. We need to be quiet. We need maybe to guard our lifestyle a little bit with our busyness, what we, are, what we allow ourselves to hear. We take all of that in. We need to protect ourselves. Yes, we do need to function here because we are here, but we need to find lifestyles that are meditative and quiet, and we need to be alone very much because we're not alone ever. The best company in the world is within us, that voice. We can have families, we can have friends, we can live out in the world, but basically we all need to hear our own inner voice. We can't give this to anybody else. You can't heal anybody. You can be an avenue for the presence. If someone comes to you and wants a healing and you can say, open yourself up, realize with me these thoughts, 
But we never do that healing. It's God working through the instrument that does all the work. And Jesus knew that better than anyone. I did not heal you. I have been fed. I have been given the words. I've been given the love. Everything comes through me from my source. So the source of all is the source of this universe. It's whole, it's perfect. You look out at the birds, you look out at nature, you look at the sea, you see the tides, you see the rain, you see the sun. We didn't have to affirm any of that to have it. We've got to understand those are our miracles. That's pulsating, breathing life going on all the time. Those are our gifts to remind us who caused this beautiful world. There is one creator of everything. So our gifts are just observing nature, observing a child being born, of seeing the consciousness of souls being who they really are. It's a beautiful way to live, to enjoy the gifts of spirit, to look at the stars. Joel used to look out at night at those stars and just marvel. We marvel at the mystery. And I don't know about you, but I never get used to it. I'm always taken aback with the beauty of the earth. I love nature. I love being in nature. I love the smell of nature. I love to walk in the rain. All of that that's taken care of for us. We need to give thanks. We need to be grateful. And gratitude is thank you, God, for being my source. And thank you, God, for being that voice that takes care of me, that tells me exactly what to do if I listen. I need to listen. I need to know. That is the only thing I need to know, is we live for only that voice. There's nothing, going to, there's nothing else for us to do, except see the nothingness of an earth plane moment that has fear involved and quickly understand the presence of God. That is not the presence of God. The one cause, that presence of love and life, pulsating, living, the word is alive. And let me get back again to that Bible. The Word is made flesh. It's not a book. It's not a historical novel. It's, not, um, it's nothing but it's alive. But it can't be alive unless you realize the presence. It has to be alive. The Word may, must be made flesh. So to be made flesh, you take the truths of the readings and the studying, and you affirm, yes, we do use these tools, these instruments, to take us to that place where the Word is alive. And then Spirit is alive, and Spirit comes to us and speaks to us, and we feel it. We feel that that's all there is in life, is that Spirit. So we're working our way through who knows how many incarnations where we're looking for our assignment. But trust me, friends, when you're put on a path, there's no turning back because you don't want to. And you find the miracles that work in your life are just so easy and so peaceful. And it gets easier and easier and more peaceful and more peaceful. And we need to give thanks that we're not here by accident that our children are not here by accident, that we may be the instruments of the bodies that brought them here, but they're not ours. Their consciousness is in that one law, that one cause of everything that's here, that child, your children, my children, are all involved in that. They're gifts from God, as are our favorite pets, our good friends, and everything will come to us. Everything, we will be blessed by those that come to us as we live the infinite way. And we will be a blessing to those as we live the infinite way. That will be done, everything's done for us. How nice is that? How simple life can be if we just let it go and let it deal with us. Let it give us what we're supposed to get next. In an original way, everyone, what genius. Oh, it's, there are no words for that. There are no words for the vortex, that beautiful place that's within us that we all have. And I'm about to wrap down, but I have to share one thing at the end of my show because I've been talking a lot about people I've lost. I have gained a granddaughter. Her name is Lyle Tadea Bartlett. She was born on October 27th this year. She's what coming up on six weeks. She's beautiful. I think there's a, a, a tad of red hair possible. She's funny and she is a yogi. I have had hysterics watching her stretch 
every little leg and, and arm and little fist. She, I can see what Megan must have gone through in, with her in her body. And Alex and Megan, I congratulate you and your aunt and your uncle and your grandmas and all the relatives are so blessed. And we're so grateful that Lyle Tadea Bartlett was born. And with that, I want to thank all of you for joining me today on Awaken the Dream. I will talk to you again soon.